Hey everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this update video. I trust and hope that you guys are doing really fantastic this afternoon and so we're going to be taking a look at all our systems across the North Atlantic and uh, we've got that area highlighted where we could see some development as we head into the latter part of this week going into next week uh, where we could have it being a problem for the Caribbean and also we'll be talking about what happens should we run out of names. So should there be more than seven named storms because there are only seven names left so should there be eight what happens so i'll be discussing that later down in this video but let's go ahead and take a look at what is happening across the atlantic let's go on to these satellites and so here we can see Nigel is pretty prominent right now as we can see on the infrared satellite. A couple of thunderstorms developing across some areas this afternoon, sections of the Caribbean, but for most islands it has been pretty dry. I have been seeing the comments from you guys in Barbados, Grenada, Trinidad, Aruba, so it has been very dry, especially across southeastern islands. But some areas have been experiencing some thunderstorm activity uh, in the afternoon hours due to that daytime heating and then even over in some spots across Central America and Northern South America, mostly for Colombia and Venezuela, there is some activity there as well. But as we look in the vicinity of the Bahamas, uh, the Turks and Caicos Islands, much not happening. Maybe just a passing shower at the most, but nothing too crazy going on right now. Similar story for the Northern uh, islands of the Caribbean, the Cayman Islands, Jamaica, Cuba, Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, and uh, of course the Leeward Islands. So now let's go ahead and talk about our active systems out there. Well, we've got uh, both Margo and Lee now post-tropical cyclone. So let's start out with Lee. Here we have it. It is sustaining winds of 45 miles per hour and moving quickly up to the northeast at 22 miles per hour. So all watches, warnings, everything has been discontinued as the cyclone continues to weaken and so after the rest of today whatever is left of the system should continue to make its way back toward the open waters of the Atlantic moving through New Finland and uh, it is pretty weak right now same story for Margo so Margo is barely hanging on to those tropical storm force winds as we can see maximum sustained winds are at 40 miles per hour and it is currently moving to the west northwest at 9 miles per hour so it should be a post tropical cyclone before eventually dissipating maybe as we head to the middle part of this week here. So let's see what eventually happens with it. And now let's go ahead and move on to Nigel. So here we have it. It has been taking advantage of the conducive environment that it is in and it has been intensifying. So currently it is sustaining winds of 60 miles per hour. Gusts are higher than that and it is moving up to the uh, north northwest at 13 miles per hour so by tomorrow morning it is likely to become a hurricane and it has the potential to strengthen into a major hurricane by tuesday so let's see if it'll manage to do so but it should remain well offshore of bermuda so the center of it is going to be passing well east of the island so the main concern could be the uh, rough seas that are induced by the system which is likely to be a hurricane at the time but as it relates to the heavy rainfall the strong winds those should all be offshore so nigel is likely to be a fish storm for the most part and then afterwards it's going to be making that curve to the northeast and quickly making its way out and so going on to this area which is highlighted so here we see that the chance has increased up to 40 percent so it's now highlighted in orange and that is representing that medium chance of development and we don't have an x because that tropical wave has not yet emerged so as it does so uh, later this week heading to the middle of the week we'll see that x to show the location and then as it makes its way generally westward we could see it try to develop under conducive environmental conditions so once there's uh, quite a bit of moisture as well as those weaker upper level winds then we'll definitely see some development of this and models have been expecting that it will in fact develop but whether or not this might be a problem for the caribbean is yet to be determined for one it is pretty far out so there are bound to be some changes here and and uh, also, we, we're seeing a bit of variation now in terms of the potential future track of it. So let's go ahead and take a look at some model data. So we're focusing on ensemble tracks here for both GFS and Euro, kickstarting with Euro. Now this goes out to the next 10 days, which would be uh, out to the 27th of the month. And so uh, there we have those tracks for Nigel, uh, also for Marco. And I also want to make mention of that potential system of the southeastern U.S. coast. So some models have been sniffing at something trying to develop there, potentially a subtropical cyclone that would make its way up to the north. But there we have that main cluster that we're focusing 
on in association with that next disturbance to come off the African coast. We're seeing this sort of uh, west-northwest to northwest track expected by some of these members here. So if that high-pressure system weakens as the system makes its way to the west, then that would allow for that turn up to the northwest. But if it remains strong out there, then it is likely to continue to the Caribbean. And then heading on to the GFS tracks here, we can see these uh, tracks being very consistent about that turn with Nigel. So not being a problem for Bermuda, also for Margo. And then we are seeing a lot more members hopping onto that potential southeast system. But then as it relates to that next tropical wave to emerge, there we can see that we've got quite a bit of members taking it very close or into the Caribbean. So as I said, that is yet to be determined and we definitely want to keep watching. And so with the formation of Nigel, there are only seven names left to be used for this hurricane season. So what are the chances that we run out of names? Well, we still got, we're in that second half of September now and in October and November, we typically see some storms spin up and we also have to rem uh, remember the fact that there are above average temperatures out there, which is essentially that fuel tropical cyclones need to sustain themselves. So I think that there is a solid chance of seeing all the names being used up for this hurricane season with additional storms. And uh, the last time this happened was back in 2020 and then before that, it was 2005. And the initial supplementary list or that additional list, should in case uh, the season run out of names, was actually the Greek alphabet. So Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, Zeta, and so on. So that was used in 2005. Uh, there were names up to Zeta used. And then back in 2020, Iota was the last storm that developed. However, there was some concern and confusion as it relates to retirement because we know that once tropical storms storms or hurricanes are very destructive, the name is retired and replaced with another of the same letter and gender. So uh, there was some confusion as it relates to that because there were very strong hurricanes such as Eta and Iota which did quite a number on Central America and it would be impractical to retire a Greek letter. So what happened was that they came up with a regular list to be used as the supplementary list. This is what it is. So the first name is Adria. So should in case we run out of names for this hurricane season, this is the list we'll resort to. So it consists of regular names that would easily be retired and replaced. So let's see if this will be the first year where that list is actually used. But of course, guys, I'm here to keep you posted as time goes by on all that is happening and all that is expected across the basin. And so that is it for this update. I trust and hope you found it to be quite informative. But if you have any questions, please do leave them in the comments. I'll respond to you once I get the chance to do so. And as always, remember to do otherwise.